Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a ride on the E-Ride Pro. But not just any ride. This is one I've been wanting to do for a while because today, we're gonna to be checking out some of their sights from the Zodiac Killer. Now, right now, I'm in Lake Herman Road in Benicia, California. Uh, I might not be exactly accurate in my descriptions because I'm far from a, a historian on the Zodiac Killer, but I wanted to kind of briefly go over what happened and uh, what these sites look like today. So today we're going to be checking a couple of the Zodiac Killer sites. I chose the uh, E-Ride Pro because we're going to be riding through Vallejo, California. And uh, if any of you guys are familiar with Vallejo, California, speed might come in handy when I go through there because I don't want to be stopped for any prolonged period of time. So guys, what do you say? You want to join me for some uh, historical site visits today and i even have one bonus one at the end of this video guys you're not going to want to miss this and i guarantee you've seen it before whether you realize it or not anyways guys come on let's get going so this is lake herman road right here and you can see this is still a rural part of benicia right between benicia and vallejo and this is what was known as a lover's lane so on december 20th 1968 Betty Lou Jensen, 16 years old, and David Faraday came here after a date and they parked their car right here. A car pulled in next to them, I believe it's a brown sedan, pulled in next to them around 10.15 p.m. Initially they believed that he got out and he fired into the car but he didn't hit them at first, forcing them to exit out of the passenger side of the vehicle. So they ran this direction over here. He shot David Faraday in the back of the head with a 22 caliber rifle killing him I believe immediately and then as Betty Lou Jensen was running away shooting her five times in the back as she ran which ended up killing her but I've read reports too that earlier that night on this same road there was a road rage incident reported where there was a brown car following somebody flashing their lights and doing all sorts of stuff so it's kind of believed that it was the same person later on in this video I'm going to go by the main suspect's house Arthur Lee Allen but yeah this is the site of the first Zodiac Killer murder. Kind of eerie. I mean, it looks largely unchanged today, but here it is. I'll try and find some pictures of what it looked like then, but not too different than it looks today. But yeah, one of the reasons I picked E-Ride Pro as well is because I have to go on this road for a couple miles and I want to be able to go as fast as possible. So yeah, anyways, guys, this is what the site looks like today. And, uh, here for anyone to check out if you want to. I've made some changes to the E-Ride Pro. It's got a blue wrap on it now. I changed the seat. I'm gonna be doing a couple other mods to it, but that's gonna be the topic of a future video. But I do wanna clear the air right now, guys. I am not a Dallas Cowboys fan. So don't get any, uh, don't get any crazy ideas. We're gonna get going to where the second murders took place, which is about five miles down the road. Guys, come on, let's get going. And you'll probably be able to tell why I wanted to pick this bike because speed is going to be important. I'm not exactly a fan of riding on the side of the road next to really fast traffic, so this bike can go over 50. We're going to be able to blend right in. I wonder, I wonder how many of these locals here drive by here all the time and realize that happened right here. I mean, I think everyone kind of knows the story of the Zodiac Killer. But I'm not really sure a lot of people know that it happened right in our own backyard, right here in the Bay Area. Yeah, see, when I look how close that guy's getting to the corner. I don't want to, I don't like riding my bicycle on the, uh, on the shoulder here. All it takes is one person not paying attention to just take you out. So, we're going to have to ride this once going out and once back in, so it's going to be nice to have the speed. Got new tires on this bike as well, so it handles significantly better on the asphalt. I don't know how road bikers uh, get off on riding like this. It is not my cup of tea whatsoever. Take advantage of this nice uh, shoulder here. Anyways, guys, I'm not going to bore you with this whole ride. I'll catch up to you when we get to the next spot. All right, guys, we're at the location of the second set of Zodiac murders, which occurred right here in the parking lot of the Brew Rock Springs Park in Vallejo, California. Now this one happened on July 4th, 1969. I'm not sure exactly what the parking lot looked like back then, you know, cause that's what, 50 years ago now. So I can't tell you exactly where it happened, but this is the parking lot where that occurred. Elizabeth Farron and Michael Magoe, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. They were in a car here. 
they saw it. There was a brown car that came in, came in and left. And like an hour later, it came in and it ended up shooting both of them. But I believe Michael Mago actually survived, which is how they got the description of the brown car. And I also believe this is the first time the police knew they had a serial killer on their hands because after the murders took place here, the Zodiac killer left and went to a phone booth where he reported the murders and also took responsibility for the ones the year on December before where I just showed you. So this is where the second set happened. It's kind of weird knowing all this stuff happened in your backyard. I, I really enjoy going to these historical locations, whether they be good or bad or movie locations, because you hear all these stories and you kind of forget like, wow, these are actual real locations you can visit in the flesh. You can plan a bunch of rides for your bikes or your uh, hiking or whatever. I kind of enjoy planning rides around actual locations of stuff that's happened. So this is where that occurred right here. It's kind of uh, weird when you see these places in person because, you know, this is just another parking lot. But this has so much more history to it here. And I also wonder, you know, how many of these people walking around this park have any idea that the Zodiac Killer murdered two people or one person in this parking lot? Now, the third set of murders has happened up at Lake Berryessa. I've been there before, but that's a pretty long drive away from here, much longer than I can go on the E-Moto. So I'm not going to be going there today. And then the fourth set and the final, these are all the confirmed. There's some theories that there's more that they can link to the Zodiac Killer, but there's only been four sets that have definitively been linked to him. Third set was at Lake Berryessi, and then the final one was in San Francisco, California. And we are also not going to be going there today, but I'm going to show you the ones that took place in Benicia and in Vallejo. But I'm going to also show you the location of the phone booth that he called in this murder from and I'm gonna show you where their main suspect, Arthur Lee Allen, was living at the time and how it's in such close proximity to all these locations. And but anyways, guys, uh, I think I'm done here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pack up and then uh, we're gonna catch up with you guys just right down the road. Come on, let's go. One of the reasons I feel kind of okay riding my Emoto around Vallejo is if any of you guys are familiar with Vallejo, I think at one point they were bankrupt and they had like five cops total, so. I don't think uh, me riding this around the street is going to be much of an issue for them. But I'm still, I like to stick to the bike lanes on this and not drive too fast. Because this is a bicycle, clearly, guys. It's pretty windy out today as well. The faster you go on these lighter bikes, the more the wind really affects you. It starts to blow you all around. You know, do these other e-bike channels take you on a historical location visits? No. Here we are at the corner of Tuolumne Street, Tuolumne and Spring Street. And this is where the location of the phone booth was located that he called in after the second set of murders. It's obviously this area has changed quite a bit since then. And all I could see is one comment saying that the corner it was on is now a church. And this is the church here. Actually, you know what? That's a church there too. So I don't really know exactly where the phone booth was located, but it was somewhere on these four corners here. As you can see here, looks like somebody tried to turn this church into a drive through church. For your younger demographic, phone booths were uh, back before cell phones. You actually had to go find a phone booth and that was where the phone was located physically on the street and you had to put change into it before even everyone had ATM cards. You had to put change into it. There was no apps or nothing. And you had to put change into that phone to make phone calls, but you could call the police for free. So what I guess also is the police department is really close to here. So he called from here and he said, I'd like to report a double homicide. And he described where it took place. And then he explained that he was also responsible for the homicides on the year before in December, the first ones. This is walking distance. This is about a 10 minute walk from Arthur Lee Allen's house. And that's where we're gonna be going next. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get back on the bike and head over that direction before I come a murder victim myself. I tell you what guys, I'm making quick work getting across town on the E-Moto though. But I'm not trying not to drive too aggressive, you know. It's not my style. So scared right now. Oh my gosh. My life flashed before my eyes right there, guys. Okay, not really. I mean, we're, we're just... So 
here we go, guys. So right there, that's 32 Fresno Street, and that's the house where Arthur Lee Allen lived, I believe, with his mother. And they had a number of reasons why he was a suspect. I, like I said, I'm not exactly an expert, but he fit the profile. He, I believe he had a connection with one of the victims, and he had a lot of complaints against him already. He had a past, so this is where he lived. He was one of the number one suspects, and they were unfortunately never able to link it to him. And in 1992, he died of a heart attack in the basement of this house here. So I feel like half the stuff that they did back in the day, they would not be able to get away with today. Like, you know, him just touching the phone would have left DNA evidence. You know, now you can't get away with doing anything like that. So this is where the suspect lives, right there. I personally believe is Arthur Lee Allen. I mean, I know conspiracy theorists like to make things more fantastical than they need to be, but it kind of makes sense that he was here. I believe he was a military guy and had uh, experience with communications and using cryptographs and all that stuff. So they had a bunch of reasons. I'm sure you can look into it or maybe you've looked into it already, but yeah, this is quite possibly where the Zodiac Killer lived, right here. But anyways, guys, I got a couple more locations I want to show you. And uh, I'm not going to be able to ride the emo to all, all of them. But, you know, just you wait, guys, because you're in for a real treat at the end of this video. It's something that I guarantee you've seen before. And chances are you might not even have known it was real or not. But, guys, rest assured, it's real. And you're going to see exactly what it looks like in real life. Or at least exactly what it looks like today through my lens. Anyways, guys, I'm going to get going back to my truck and we're gonna get going to the next site. Come on, let's go. All right, we're back on the high speed road. I am at 65% battery. Let's see how much we eat up going fast down this road. This is only like a three or four mile stretch too. Man, these streets, these tires I got, they're definitely more of a all around tire as opposed to the dirt tires this bike comes with. So now it leans way smoother. It feels better at speed for sure. These are the Shinko 244s. All right, here we go. Cruising at 53. I do notice these tires are heavier. So uh, they definitely eat up a little bit of your power. They're two pounds heavier per tire. We're at 56. So this is why it's nice to have a faster e motor, that's for sure. 60, baby. We're going downhill a little bit, though. It's hauling ass right now. Uh, full face is nice because I can feel things pelting me in the face right now. And no one behind me this whole time. All right. Oh, that's crazy. We started at 65. I'm down to 57%. And that was like two or three miles. So guys, when you start going high speed on electric devices, it just eats up a ton of your power. But we're going through a little reservoir here. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be going nice and slow. Looks like we're breaking a little bit of rules here. But I'm gonna be going slow and I'm really only doing this because this cuts from that road back there all the way to a neighborhood where I could actually park. Check out this spillway here. Kind of cool, huh? You know what's cool about this bike? You can also do 60 miles an hour, but you can also crawl at 10 miles an hour through a little trail like this. These are very versatile. I think the most of the looks you get on this bike is two reasons. One, because I have a full face helmet on, and two, because, I mean, this looks like a dirt bike, because it is a dirt bike. But if this bike looked like a normal bike, 
I don't think anyone would give you a second glance. Look at this secret passage we got here. Oh, we made it. Looks like total we had 17.4 miles. And I used, I'm at 54% of the battery. So that's not too bad considering how much battery, how fast I was going a lot of the time. But anyways, guys, this video is more about the Zodiac. Let's get, let's go to our next site. So here we are in downtown Napa, and right here is the location where the th second phone booth was located. It was on the side of this building. It looks different now, but the building is the same. I believe there was another smaller structure on the side here, and the phone booth was right over here. And if you look at pictures from back then, you can see in the background there was a car wash that was once located over here as well. But this is where the Zodiac Killer came to call the police and notify them of the double homicide after he left Lake Berryessa. So that happened right here. It's pretty neat. Being in the same locations where these historical events happened. The site in Lake Berryessa, I've been there before, but that's quite a drive from here. And uh, honestly, it's a really twisty two lane road. And I drive this big truck and uh, it's not very fun. Maybe one of these days I'll get back out there, but today is not that day. But guys, that's going to do it for the Zodiac Killer locations. But I do have one more location I do want to show you since it's in this general area. And guys, it's going to knock your socks off. Because I went my whole life, I'm an IT person, I work in IT, and I never knew this very significant place that was in my own backyard my, this whole time. Anyways, guys, prepare to have your minds blown. Well, since we're in Napa, we gotta fit in a little bit, right? It's a great year for grapes. <laughs> All right, guys, we made it to our final destination for today. And uh, let's see, let me give you a second, guys. Do you recognize, do you recognize where I'm at? Now, ironically, this location is called Bliss. This is the world famous place where they took the photo they took the photograph of the windows xp background image now the history says i've heard this referred as the most viewed picture in human history because this was on the default background for windows xp for millions and millions and millions of computers and it was take that picture was taken right here now ironically it's called bliss and as you can see this is hardly blissful at all. This is on the side of a super busy road. You can see I had to park my bike down there in the ditch because I'm not trying to unalive myself. But guys, here it is right behind me. The story of the photographer was supposedly lived out here. He was commuting in the work or something one morning and the light was hitting the mountains just right and he stopped and took that picture. And then that was actually sold to a site that Microsoft ended up buying and then they saw that picture and they ended up choosing that as their default desktop background and it's right there it's pretty cool guys i don't know i was looking for something on the line and then i saw that this location was right here in sonoma california so i was really surprised because i never knew if it was a real picture or not because you, you know how much thought have you ever put into the windows xp background but there it is guys check it out pretty neat huh how many people in the human race have seen this picture? How many people? Very seen. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be giving away a t-shirt and all you have to do to enter the drawing is buy one of every single bike that I have an affiliate link for and that will enter you in the drawing to win one of these $25 t-shirts. Guys, so I'm looking forward to pick a drawing. We're gonna pick a winner on August 1st and I look forward to seeing who wins. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe and we will catch you in the next one. Peace.